So my name is Frederick Harbour, uh, call me Fred, uh, same thing, actually English is not my uh, first language, so if you have any question in French, Soyez bien à l'aise, Québécois problème, tu parles français, de loin mieux que Rémi. So uh, this morning I'm going to do this in Franglish because most of the speakers are uh, Anglophone and you're going to be stuck with my lovely and beautiful and really seductive accent. So uh, I'm a Senior Technical Evangelist at Imunio, uh, basically doing the same thing as Rémi but just a little bit better. Uh, actually we are doing, uh, we are in the uh, web security space, so offering a product for uh, web developer and giving you real-time security and detection about any treats within your application. But I'm not there to talk about Imunio, I'm not there to talk about security. I'm there to talk about responsive web design. So feel free during the conference if you want to uh, tweet, use hat hefarper for the good thing, the bad thing, the like terrible thing that I'm going to say during my talk. Um, I'm going to put the slides and also the recording online on my blog. I put the link at the end, so no need to take any notes of things in the uh, presentation. You don't see it right now, but for me, it's like they're killing me. I need to stay in front of the mic. And I used to like walk a lot and, and, and move a lot, so I'm going to try to stay near the mic. So uh, if there's anything, you don't hear me. Usually, I don't need any. Actually, I don't need any mic most of the time. Can you hear me OK? Yeah, yeah OK. So I'll try to go to the mic once in a while, but it's just like that's going to kill me being here like 45 minutes. And that's probably going to be boring for you. So at least if you don't like my talk, you can just follow me where I'm walking. And that's going to be kind of uh, interactive. So how many of you know responsive web design? And by no, I mean like use it and create website with it and really try to create great experience for your users. Awesome. Okay, so uh, awesome in both ways. Uh, some people know, some people use it. Awesome, because there's a lot of people that did not raise their hands, so uh, we're going to have a, a, a probably fun 45 minutes because at least, you, I hope, you're going to learn something. So uh, in a galaxy not so far away, and uh, I look at the crowd, and I, I'm, I'm really older than I thought, but uh, for some of you that are doing web development for a couple of years, uh, you may recognize that little guy. Uh, <laughs> or your parent does, or, or like, you probably see this in history book. But uh, we used to, when we, we started to create a website, and we were not even talking about web application, we are just only talking about websites. Uh, we were basically coding for those guys, like mostly, hey, 800 by 600 pixels, and, and that's gonna run on, on IE and Firefox, and, and that's done like uh, on Windows, and this is basically what we had to do, what we had to support. Uh, I think it was a good time. <laughs> it was a lot easier to be a web developer during that time, but today there is so many devices, and we're talking not just about different type of smartphones, different type of uh, laptop, we're also talking about, oh God, we're also talking about different devices, and all devices can uh, access the web today, like on my Xbox, on my iPod, Apple TV, on my e-reader, like on my Kindle, I can go on a website. Is there anyone working at Amazon? Okay, so this is not the best experience ever. This is kind of like a shitty browser, but still, I can access the web. So, uh, I want to give my user a great experience. I know people at Amazon, I should not put that talk online. But uh, the fact is that even if you don't have a lot of people using the Kindle to go to your website, and it may not make sense for most of the time, uh, you still want to provide an okay experience at least. So in today's world, we have to adapt, we have to think about all those devices. We need to give, to, to give, to give a great experience to our users. And this is what we are doing. We're creating website, we're creating web application, of course, it's because we want a paycheck, I want to make a living out of it. But uh, like you, you better have the best feature out there. If people cannot use it or if they don't have a great experience, you're screwed. So basically, this is what we have to do. So there is no uh, good presentation without cap pictures. There is no link at all with the demo, which is just because I want to cap in my presentation. So uh, you probably all have great experience on the web and sometimes really shitty experience. I hate using that website because I really like those folks. I really like that conference. 
But the website is really great, quite creative, uh, a lot of color. It's a really a great conference. It's happening in Toronto. But the website is not really, uh, doesn't give you a great experience where you're not on the browser. So if I take that website, I have access to a lot of information, Twitter and Facebook and latest news and all the events that they're going to have. But if I try to minimize that windows, and the idea here is not really about, uh, it's really not about like playing with the browser. It's like I'm kind of simulating on the smartphone. And you see now that I need to scroll and scroll up, scroll down, and probably on my uh, smartphone, I'm going to have to zoom in, zoom out. I'm probably going to click on the wrong link, and I'm probably going to be annoyed. In that case, it's not that uh, critical because at the end of the day, if I go there, it's probably because I want to buy a ticket because it's, it's the conference I want to go. But if I'm going to, to your website to use uh, or to buy one of your products, and I'm not able to do it, or I just don't have a great experience on, on my smartphone, I'm going to use Google. I'm going to search for your company here, and I'm going to go buy my stuff on another, another website. I'm that kind of guy. Like, no, <laughs> I, like, I don't care about your company. I want that product. I want to use it. Give me a great experience. If you don't do it, uh, that's not going to happen. And now I just like play it with my, uh, with my browser, but I can't, in, in any browser out there, I have a tool to like simulate different devices. And it's not that better. Like I have the exact same experience. So if you go in your browser and the developer tools, all browsers have this kind of tool. You can uh, simulate either different sizes of screen or just try to uh, use different preset devices. So either a laptop, either a iPhone, and no matter those devices, you're gonna be able to see how it's going. It's just like easier to just play with a browser. But uh, you're gonna see it's quite interesting once you understand, once you know that you can do this, you're probably gonna go on, on if you didn't know before, you're probably gonna go on all websites starting from now and trying to resize to see how it's going on a website. If the website is uh, giving you a great experience. So great website, great information, but at the end of the day, I didn't get the best experience. Justin Bieber. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan. So uh, some people are laughing, other people are like, is it joking or is it real? So I'm not gonna answer that question. <laughs> so uh, this website, uh, tickets, now, uh, we don't use it that much, I think, in Canada, but it's, it's quite popular out there. Like, you can buy uh, a lot of tickets for different shows. And I don't know for you, but I'm uh, probably a little bit too much addicted to my smartphone. So most of the time when I have time to kill, like I'm, I'm walking to some place, I'm in the public transit, I'm going to look at website. And right now I want to buy, oh my God, I'm recording this. I want to buy tickets for Justin Bieber. So I'm on my smartphone. I'm looking for the show. And I got that web page and I said, hey, I, I sent an email to uh, Rami because I know he really loved uh, Justin Bieber too. And I said, Rami, we need to go out like hats, like two real men with beard, go to Justin Bieber show. And I sent him that link. But Rami is at work, not working because he looked at my email, opened this in the browser, and this is what he see. So uh, this is perfect on a smartphone. Like, not a lot of information, good enough, great experience. But I sent the link that I had to Remy. Remy opened this in the browser. This is what he got. Uh, not the best use of the space. And worse, like you probably saw, <laughs> Remy's laughing like, you said that I like Justin Bieber. Uh, <laughs> worse than that, probably Remy is a quite brilliant guy. So uh, you're going to say, hey, I, I know tech. Most of the time, just remove the M. And uh, that's going to be good. I'm going to access the full website. Now, because the internet is like fluffy, uh, you should believe me. And, and what's going to happen is that that doesn't work for that website. That, that used to work for uh, The Verge when they, before they went responsive, you were just removing the M and you got like the full experience. So at least it's not that bad, but it's still one step like that I need to do to make it happen. But with that website, uh, it's just that I'm going to have a 404, like the web page does not exist. So I have to deal with that page and I'm probably missing a lot of information that I want because I have space. So it's not a great experience. And, and funny enough, um, there's that thing called responsive web design that um, exists for a long time, a couple of years, but there's still a lot of people that either don't 
know about it or don't understand or don't use it or don't want to use it. And there is other technique to just give a great experience, but we still have, in 2015, really bad experience with websites. And we're making websites since forever, but now we have technology to make it easier. So now I have the like vague impression that nobody's listening to me and everybody's reading what's on the screen. It's okay. Uh, so basically it's really small, but because the quality is really not that good for those of you that know it, it's KCD. Uh, it's just like, a, a, what do you call this, a Venn Vin diagram or yeah, Venn diagram or something. Uh, it's, it's like what you can find on a university website, uh, what the uh, developer, like the university uh, thing that people want to get has information. And, and in the middle, uh, the only thing that goes across the two circles is just the name of the university. I don't know for you, when you go on a university website, there's like uh, pictures of a lot of things. There's a lot of information, but what I want to know is like which courses I can take, how it's working, what is the cost, when it's happening. And, and that always makes me laugh uh, alone in the dark in my room <laughs> laughing. But I, it's always like, this is the same kind of thing when I, I go on a website and I have like either a mobile version and I'm like, yeah, but like you're removing information that I want. You think that I want something else, but I, I don't think you took the time to really, to really, to took the time to really think about, hey, what my users really want. And, and you need to uh, understand that it's not because I'm on a smartphone, I'm on a smaller screen that uh, it's, Basically, that I'm walking through your venue, that I'm, I'm, I'm outside. Most of the time, I'm just like on my couch at home. I'm just too lazy to walk like three steps away to reach my computer because I have my smartphone with me. But I still want a full or a great experience. So there is that thing called responsive web design. It's there for a couple of years. Uh, it's a Marco, uh, it's a Marco that uh, coined the term five years ago-ish, a little more than five years ago. And say, what about if we, um, Stop trying to target specifically different devices and trying to get one experience to user but on many devices. Really, really trying to think about the user's experience. So instead of like, what do we think that we should do? Uh, which device we should target? No, let's just give great experience on most of the devices out there. Let's think about the different devices' capabilities instead of configuration, like uh, instead of trying to detect the version of my, okay, do, do, do this guy use a iPhone 5 or do you use a, a like a, a, a Microsoft phone or do you use an Android and which kind of device? So no, let's just, okay, what's the size of the viewport and what can I do with that size? What information can I display in that size? And by doing this, you're gonna help your website or your web application to be future proof because you're not gonna target specific devices. You may be able to do so, and you will probably do so, but you will still give an okay, at least, experience on other devices. So no matter if tomorrow, my website is like, right now, the design is really, like, really not good. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, no matter the devices, like, I didn't touch the CSS for years, probably gonna see why, but, but no matter the new devices out there, I still give you an okay experience, because I thought about the viewport instead of thinking about uh, different devices. So, still my little kitty friend here. Uh, I'm kind of a, like a fan or and not a fan of Starbucks. I really like their sugar type of coffee, but when I want a real coffee, I just go elsewhere. But uh, still, uh, Starbucks get a great experience. You go on a website, uh, all the information is there. I have like some promotion about like those beautiful mugs that create a, a storm on social media. Like, it's kind of sad, but yeah. So we are at that time of the year with social media. And uh, so I have all the information. And if I uh, change the viewport, you're going to see that either they resize some images, uh, they change how they display the information. But what is really interesting with that website is that I still get all the information I need. They didn't change the information I have. They changed the way they display the information. They changed the order. Uh, they think that, okay, maybe... Uh, and maybe, and it's not intrusive, maybe uh, this guy is walking and is looking for a Starbucks because he's going to die or he's not going to have a coffee really soon. So I have that little guy here where I can say, okay, no, I'm going to find my Starbucks. But I know, no, I'm on my smartphone, on my couch, or not working at work, and uh, I just want to order, like, great coffee because this is a gift I'm going to give to someone uh, during Christmas time. So I still have access to all the information, but they also reorder 
in most of the website, you're going to have the menu on top, which makes sense. It's just easier. So what it did for uh, the mobile version, it just moved the stuff on the back, uh, on the bottom. So yes, I still have the menu, but maybe, yeah, this is nutrition fact is maybe not the most important thing I want. So they gave me a great experience, but it's not just also about uh, like commercial application. BBC, we used to uh, be one of my uh, anti-pattern examples. They did a great job, I don't know when, recently, I just discovered this morning, but uh, this is kind of a website with a lot of information. This is information website, so use website. So there is a lot of things, but they really did a great job because I still have, like let's say that I'm on a tablet. So great, I still have like those huge images that are like amazing that give me the interest to read that article. If I continue to make it smaller, there is still like the biggest headline is there, but I still have access to everything to remove images. Uh, they probably thought about the fact that, hey, you're on the slowest connection or probably in Canada and got screwed by you pay too much for your data. So uh, we're gonna remove some images and, and that's good. So uh, even for more, like I would say, important website or more uh, information-driven website, there's a lot of things to do. And even when it's like more creative type of website, like this one, um, anyone doing like epilepsy or something like this? No, it's a serious, it's a serious question for uh, first time because this thing is like killing me and I'm not even like an epilepsy. So uh, you basically play the album. It's crazy, huh? I think we're gonna look at this for the next 30 minutes. People that don't throw up win a t-shirt. Uh, okay, so uh, Rami is like, why did I have to have to speak? So, uh, okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> That's really killing me, I don't know why. But uh, even for that website, uh, this still gave me a great experience. I still have that well to listen to music. That had nothing to my experience, but it's still nice. And, and I can still do this on a smartphone. I'm gonna have the play, will be on top, and great experience. So any type of website, you can have benefits of really thinking about different devices. So those are some examples, but you know uh, more example than I know. You, you go on the web, your user, before being a developer, before being a designer, whatever what you do, your life, you're still a user first. So you see those websites where you have like really, really bad experience, but you see also those websites where it's like, yeah, nice thing. And the fact that I like with responsive web design is that you don't, uh, it's not about, as I said, deten detecting specific devices. It's not about creating multiple experience. It's about creating one experience that I'm gonna adapt on different view source, uh, view size. So uh, basically, the secret sauce of responsive web design. You're gonna need a flexible grid-based layout. I'm gonna come back on those later. You're gonna need uh, flexible images in the media. And the third one, which is the magical unicorn of like the secret sauce, is really media queries. Sean is like, yeah, Fred, you said unicorn? You only need 10 bucks. So uh, the first thing is a uh, flexible grid-based layout. Responsive, non-responsive site are no fun. Like, I, I show you, I don't have to sell this to you. It's like, it's a really bad experience. Uh, fixed with websites, they may make sense at some point for some line of business website or web application. You may not want your website to be accessible by all devices, but most of the websites or web application we're making today, we want them to be accessible on the most devices out there. Even for the, like, the people or the devices that are not like super popular, there's still users out there that you may miss. There's still potential customers that you may lose. And you're not thinking about other platform. I could say, yeah, most of my users are using uh, Windows or OS X. I don't really care about Linux. Well, it's not a good example because you're all developer. You may care about Linux, but uh, let's talk to marketing people and they say, no, 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 we don't care. Like people, people using Safari is a small number of jobs. We want to target Chrome and, and Firefox and we don't care about Hedge. And like, no, you need to care about those other devices or other uh, browsers. So the first thing to do from your previous way of doing things to the new one is really to go from pixels and use M's. So, this is the uh, small like formula we're gonna use for the next 30 minutes. Can someone explain? Either? I put that major, I stole that, that major somewhere. I just don't have any, any idea what it is, seriously. So uh, the algorithm is, is way simpler than that. Uh, we're gonna put the target, we're gonna divide by the context, and that's gonna give us the new result. 
So now it's kind of like it doesn't seem seem simple, but they still don't understand what I'm going through. So uh, oh, and you can use REM also. It's just gonna like uh, the target's gonna be the root. Actually, I wrote the context, but uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be the, uh, the target. So if I get that example on the top, I have that H1 with a link. So my H1 is like the, the black box, it's responsive web design, this is the title of my article, but I have like green more, it's a link. Right now, my H1 is 24 pixels. This one is a little more tricky because uh, my target is 24 pixels. This is the size that I want my H1 to be displayed in the browser. Any browser, I want it to be 24 pixels. The context in that case is going to be 16 pixels because in my browser, the browser I use, the default size of H1 is 16. Because I don't have any context in that case, the H1 is really inside the HTML page. So I'm going to divide 24 by 16, that's going to give me a, a, a result of 1.5. So my new font size, instead of being 24 pixels, is going to be 1.5 EM. That means that every time I'm going to try to resize or, or like display my website on a, on a smaller or bigger device, my H1 would be 1.5, the size of the default H1 that would be displayed in the browser. Now it's like, ooh, I'm not sure what you're talking about, Fred. I'm not sure either, so it's okay. If we take the second example, it's a little bit easier to understand. So my, my link is inside my H1. So the font size that I wanted before thinking about responsive web design was like, hey, 11 pixels seems great, big enough, people can click on it. So this is my target. Now my context is a little more uh, interesting. My context is the H1. My link is inside the H1. My box, my context is H1. Did I say my context is H1? <laughs> so it's 24 pixels. In that case, I'm going to do 11 divided by 24. That's going to give me uh, 0.4583333333333 and, and a couple of three. So uh, what I'm going to do in my code, I'm going to say H1 A font size guy equal. French, uh, 0 0.458, and there's no plus. I cannot put plus. Uh, it's just because I didn't have enough space in my slide. But basically, there's two things I can do right now. I can just like round the number myself and, and put uh, 0 0.458, and I'm good to go. Uh, that's gonna be that's gonna give me kind of the size that I want. But maybe you're not that picky. Or you can just took the, uh, the the calculation you did and just put like 0 0.4583333 and no matter the numbers after, the browser will do the job for you. The browser will round it for you and you're gonna have a more precise uh, uh, display or size of your element. So uh, don't feel the need to round the number yourself. Uh, the browser doesn't really care. Like you won't have an overhead in your process and your page loading because you put a lot of three uh, after uh, the number. So if we go to maybe a little more complex or, or usual type of website, you see a lot of those websites, you have the HTML page, uh, you have the content, the blog, and there's like two columns, the main column are probably the articles, and the other that is probably the sidebar with like menu or comments or, or whatever makes sense for you. So we have that page. So this is my, my usual page that I did for uh, like small website. All the width, okay, I have a page, uh, the blog, 900 pixels, I have the main that is inside the blog, and the other that is also inside the blog. So I have two columns inside of my blog. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the context divided by uh, the target. So I'm gonna do, okay, the page, this one is a little bit tricky also. I was on a screen where the resolution was uh, 2024. So this is my uh, context right now because I, I divide my entire page uh, or the size of my entire page by uh, the screen size. The blog, I'm going to do the same thing, but now the blog is inside the page. So I'm going to do 900 divided by 960. The main, if you understand, if you pull the flow, 566 pixel by 900 because the main is inside the blog. And I'm going to do the same thing with other. So it's kind of a lot of work. But at the end of the day, I'm, that's going to give me those percentage uh, for the size. So now I'm looking because they're, are, like those are HTML element. It's not about the font. It's more about the size. I'm going to give. I'm going to get percentages. The third one, the blog domain again, or, or the fourth one, there is no plus. It's just for the slides. Again, you round the number yourself, or just put like the full list of number after the dot. Uh, the trick here 
is that it's hard to remember in a month where did I took the 93.75 person for the blog element. So what I usually do, I put in the comment the context and the target so I can remember what it was. So all those calculations, this seems like, okay, I went from that part to the other part. It seems to be a little bit like, eh, it's, quite a, it's, it's quite simple but complex at the same time. It's like, that's going to take me forever to change everything. So in that case, it's because I want a design that's going to be quite like per, pixel perfect kind of itch before, uh, compared to my previous or my original design. Most of the time, what people do, they just start by using like percentage or EM and they just create their design right away in responsive without going with pixels. It's just like, oh, that fits, that fits well in my uh, website, let's do this. So you, you, don't, you don't have to do all that calculation if you think it's like too complex. But if you want to go from a more, uh, I don't like to say hold way of uh, a fixed uh, grid type of website to something that's going to be responsive, you have to do those uh, small calculations. But this is only uh, the top of the iceberg. You still have other things to do. And the second one is, is quite interesting and, and it's quite important also. You need uh, flexible images and media. So it's, it's a good thing that I have my website that can uh, change side, but things about uh, the BBC website. If I have like all the div and, and all the part of the website that resides and all the fonts and the text, but I still have my, my, my big images, kind of like not a good experience. So the easiest and simple solution that is not a really good solution, but this is what you can do right now today in all browsers, just to put the max width of all your uh, media to 100%. So basically what's going to happen, sorry, is that uh, your image is going to take 100% of the width of their container. Most of the time your image is going to be inside a paragraph, inside, inside a div, inside a article. Uh, so basically that's going to work. What's going to happen is that if I have like that five megapixels or like five megabytes super high resolution, it's not even bigger anymore. Five, I'm so hope like ten megabytes picture, like great quality, and I display this on the smartphone, I'm going to have a great experience. Like the image is going to be small like this, but I'm going to have like to download ten megabytes for a picture that I'm going to see in like ten percent of the size. So. You're going to give a great experience in terms of like visual of the website. You're still going to ask all your users to download the full high resolution image that you have. So there is something, and we're quite there, I hope, really soon. Uh, there's the picture element. And uh, the picture element, uh, you're going to understand a little more how it's working with CSS music queries. So this is basically using CSS music queries inside of a picture element. So basically what's happening here is that uh, on the first line, I'm going to say, okay, if the minimum width is 40 EM, uh, let's use that image. Oh, if, uh, if, if it's not like the minimum width, so if I, I'm bigger, uh, actually my example is not that good with the name, so don't check the name of the image, but use the smallest one. This one, it's still HD, it's still a great image, but that's going to be smaller. And there is a fallback, which means that if the browser don't understand the picture element, it is going to load that image which is like a tag that all browser knows right now. The issues with picture element right now is that, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that all browsers will load the image tag first before seeing if there is any uh, media query or if there is any element in the picture. So you're still going to load the fallback first before loading maybe the right picture. So you're still like kind of like double loading images. So it's not perfect yet. And, and worse is that right now it's working in old browser, but it's not working by default. So most of uh, the picture element that's going to work in a browser like Chrome and Firefox, you need to uh, go like in developer mode, you need to activate a flag, or you need to do like some trick that your customer won't do. So it's really like kind of like develop, development feature right now. I think there is only Edge that, uh, and Rami, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think only Edge uh, respect picture without you, without you or any customer having to do anything. So it's quite interesting, like for, for a long time, like Edge is, is uh, in front of which uh, different technology than other browsers. So a uh, great element to use. Uh, you don't have to be afraid because there is the fallback. 
But right now, I understand that it's a little more work for some that, something that is not like uh, out there for uh, old browser by default. But I'm pretty sure that's going to happen soon because I'm, we are talking about picture element for like, I think, two years now. So I hope that's going to be default. But like anything with HTML5-ish or, or like new uh, feature in HTML, uh, you have polyfills, you have uh, libraries to help you. So uh, the, uh, the great guy who did that picture fill, uh, that helped you. It's a JavaScript library that's going to help you to use the uh, picture element on browser that does not support picture element. In any cases, if you don't want to go too crazy, just use max width 100% of uh, image tag, and you're going to be good to go. We're still going to give a great experience. It's just the amount of data that we're going to load to make it happen. So those two things are really great, but uh, where you can really think about, OK, not just like resizing my stuff, but trying to give great experience or specific experience to different devices is really major query. So how many of you know and use major queries today? Nice. This is one of still, after all these years, one of the my, my, my best feature in uh, CSS3. So uh, not too long ago, uh, we used to be able to define screen and print as media type. And it was great because we were able to have like that full color and, and exciting website to display to our user. But we're able also to have like that CSS uh, equivalent for printing, like remove all the stuff that doesn't matter when you print and you don't want to ruin like a, a full cartridge of like ink. <laughs> I was just looking for the word. <laughs> uh, it was not totally easy to answer different uh, like user display. You either had like you had to do detection of different devices. Oh, is this uh, browser is like Safari on iPhone? Oh, is this guy is on Windows? And, and and a lot of JavaScript work, and it was not easy. And, and most of the time, we're like thinking yes about like hey, uh, it was like iPhone and desktop, and that was basically what we're trying to do. And, it made sense at that time, but today we have like major queries that give us the opportunity to specify different other uh, type of media, but also screen size and different elements inside of my CSS. So I always saw this as like having if and else inside my CSS. So a really simple example would be that one. So directly inside my CSS file, I'm gonna say, okay, if the media type is screen and the maximum width is 600 pixels, change the body font for 80% of the phone that it is right now. So my browser is going to load this. And if I resize or if when I load the page, my maximum width is not over 600 pixel, that CSS is going to be executed by a browser. <laughs> you can do a little more super LWO funky type of example. Uh, you can mix those things. You can say, OK, if the media screen is, uh, if the media is a screen, but a minimum width, like it's between 320 pixels and 480 pixels, execute this. If the media is not print and the maximum width is 600 pixels. So you can go crazy. You can have a lot of, like I would say, if statements inside your CSS. And by doing this, you're going to be able to uh, give either change your information. If you want, you can remove information, add new information, uh, change the layout of your website. And you are able to do this without having to reload the page all the time. But you can also uh, uh, do some import statement or just put link uh, your style sheet and have specific CSS file that's going to load depending on those queries. So there is different ways for you to use them. There is different properties also you're going to be able to use. Min width, max width, min height, max height, device width, device height, orientation, as you can read. So you have access to all those media properties. But most of the time, what you will see and what you will use are those five guys or go. Min width, max width, max width, min height, max height, orientation. Is it landscape? Is it portrait? What is the maximum size of my screen? What is the minimum size of my screen? Those are the uh, properties that you will use the most. So let me show you. The Little Pete Bakery, this is a super old example. Uh, it's coming from the uh, CSS3 book uh, that's been written probably three years ago. So a great example because it's that simple and because I love pastry. Uh, can I go to something like Hackward, like Remy? Oh, the fat people. Oh, no, but I'm fat also. Oh, no, but I have nothing against fat. No. 
<laughs> I can I can say this. Um, so, sorry, that was like, sorry. <laughs> this is awkward. So, uh, website, not the sexiest website out there, but add everything you need on a website. There's a logo, there's a menu, there's like, oh my god, a picture of food, and what time is the lunch? Okay, picture of food, you have like email newsletters, search box, and, and everything I, I want on a website. So if I go, uh, oh, let's just go there. If I go burst second, I say, okay, let's go on a, on a tablet. Look at the website, look at the website, look at the screen, look at, oh! Oh, come on. That was cool. Okay, so uh, you saw, and you did not realize, because you were all like, happening. The menu, it, it, and this is the only, mostly the only thing that changed, the menu went from the left to top. So I say, okay, now I'm taking too much space with just that little menu to the left that, that is like uh, in kind of portrait uh, orientation. So they moved the menu to the top. So I'm on a tablet, still have a great experience, menu is still really accessible. But I'm going to continue and I'm going to go like on a, probably a tablet at some point. And okay, like a phablet or a smartphone. I hate that word, phablet. So let's say uh, right directly to a smartphone. And you're gonna see that, hey, you may just change. I still have all my information. And I, you know it right now, like newsletter is still there. Everything is there. So it's really a great example. So if I go see in the code, I go to more tools, developer, developer tools, and I try to Let's remove this. So I know it's like super small for now. Give me one second. Oh, it's not. Okay. Let me do this. So uh, this is not a super good example for the code itself. Don't look at all the code because they're doing the really thing specific about the browser, which you should not do. Please don't do this. And also, uh, worse and worse, they put the CSS right inside the HTML, but it was like for a demo, it's one file that's just easier like this. But if I scroll and I go to after the uh, basic stuff, I go, oh, it's a queries. So, to start out to say, okay, for uh, what did it, what uh, she did, uh, she basically say, okay, I'm going to give like an okay experience on, on different type of devices, but I may care a little more about like uh, iPhone and iPad and, and like usual uh, resolution on laptop because uh, this is probably where my customers are. And so it's not about like not thinking about the other devices, but she put a little more effort to uh, think about those devices. So if I think about that one, I'm on a, probably on a, on a laptop, and uh, this is what you saw at the beginning. But if I scroll down, I say, okay, maximum with uh, 760 pixels. Oh, maybe I'm on a tablet. So okay, let's move uh, the navigation on a hub on a corner. Uh, she also used under prefix, so that's still working, still detected by uh, browser, but. Most of the, uh, the CSS elements, you should not have to use them right now. So basically, screen, max width, 450 pixels. And you see that she only have to put new stuff or element that she want to change inside the CSS. So the browser will know that everything is there, but it will, execu will execute that part of the code only when uh, you're going to satisfy the like the if statements, the media queries inside it. So, and what is great is that once it's loaded, it's not you don't have to reload the website. The browser don't have to uh, try to load the information. Also, it's really it's there. So if I go offline right now and I resize the browser, that's still going to work. So everything is low. The CSS is low, which is good and not good because I'm loading a lot of CSS that the browser uh, may not use. So after this, uh, there's still some browser. Maybe you have to support whole browser. Uh, there is, again, uh, some framework or uh, shim that you want to use, polyfill. So basically, modernizer, uh, Remy told you if you're not using it to do uh, feature detection instead of browser detection, please use modernizer. It's going to tell you if Mr. Queries is, uh, is, is possible or no. 
there is no kind of fallback when it comes to music queries. So you need uh, to use a polyfill. There is a lot of uh, DOS available out there. If you go on Modernizer, on their GitHub page, there is a ton of resources about different uh, feature of HTML that you would like to get polyfill for, and there is a lot for media queries. So after this, it's your responsibility to be creative. So uh, Luke Lebrowski, Lebrowski, I never know how to say Look, W, uh, really great when it comes to uh, multi-device layout patterns for mobile first. Uh, he presents you a different ways to uh, put the layout. So you may want to go from two column to one. You may want to maybe remove some information. But at the end of the day, you need to find what makes sense for you, but also for your customers. So you can do whatever makes sense for you. There is that website, Media Query. So MediaQuery.es. Uh, you put the dot between the I and the E. Uh, when you go there, there's a lot of examples. So if you're not quite sure what to do with your website, there is a lot of examples. And trust me, if you go there after, after the conference and after my talk, uh, you go after the conference, you're going to uh, like play a little bit too much with that website. There's also, I know I have five minutes, but I'm going to be that speaker that can do this, that can do this. Uh, there is Brad Frost that uh, did, and I don't know if that's going to work, so let me load this and we'll see after. Uh, there's some resources, Bootstrap, still one of the best framework out there. If you don't want to manage everything that I just told you uh, with Bootstrap, that's going to be a lot easier. And it's, uh, it's made by Twitter, so there is a lot of chances that Bootstrap will be maintain, maintained for uh, a while. Uh, and it's the most used out there. There's a lot of other framework that can help you to do responsive website, but Bootstrap is kind of the most popular. Uh, for those of you that know a book apart, uh, there's a lot of great book, small book, 102 pages, pages, uh, 100 or two, 100 to 200 pages per book, uh, quite easy read. Uh, there is a good book from uh, the guy itself, it's in Marco. Uh, responsive web design, my talk is basically uh, is based on that book. So if you read the book, you're going to say, hey, I'm, I'm like reading Fred's presentation, but it's the other way around. I just stole stuff from it. Uh, there's a lot of links out there. Uh, I'm going to put uh, my presentation online. So uh, my, my last word for you is be uh, responsible when you create a website and, and, and be responsive. No? I, I really thought it was funny when I... Uh, I realized that that's going to be the last time I'm going to put that joke. Uh, so, for last thing, uh, responsible web design is quite amazing. But maybe it's not the right way for you to make it happen. At the end of the day, I just want you to give a great experience to your user because I may be one of those and I'm just selfish. I want a great experience. But still, give a great experience to people. Uh, do you start with mobile first? This is another like philosophy of like, okay, should I start to design my website by thinking about mobile first? And after I got more more space, I can add more meat to my website or more like exciting stuff. Uh, should I go adaptive web design instead? Which means that I'm gonna like my my server is gonna it's gonna basically do kind of like device detection and it's gonna or it's gonna push different version of my website. It's another technique, not a huge fan of this one, but it can be useful in different other ways. Uh, do you need visual component or visual or really specific experience on all devices? As I told you before, in the Little P Bakery, she did an experience for like iPhone, iPad, and usual resolution for laptop. Doesn't mean that you cannot see the website on other devices. It's still adapted to different devices. But she didn't took too much time to give experience to different devices because if you do this, you're still trying to target every device, which is quite impossible. So maybe you're going to be sure that the experience is going to be well with specific devices, but may not do this for all devices. And again, I told you at the beginning, don't dismiss uh, mobile as I'm walking and I'm going through somewhere. Uh, that can be about I'm just bored. I need to kill time. That can be I need to be productive. When I'm not at the office, I need to like change document and send this to my boss. Or I'm just on my couch and being lazy and using my smartphone to check different stuff from the TV show that I'm uh, watching. So, my name is Fred. Feel free to send me an email. Uh, same thing as Remy. If you have any question, technical, non-technical, marketing stuff, I'm doing a lot of marketing stuff for evangelism or personal branding, uh, let me know. Send me an email. Ping me. Uh, I'm going to be there in the break. Ping me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Go on Immunio, Test it. It's free. Uh, my presentation, the recording, the slides, and probably a blog post that's going to like type everything together is going to be on out of comfort zone.net, my personal blog.